Morning everyone. Today we've got a British brisket. It's a, not your normal full pack of brisket, but I thought I'd do a, a brisket for everyone that can't get them full packers but can go to the butchers and get a, a nice roll brisket from the butchers. So we're going to start with a really nice looking piece of meat. We're going to just trim up the silver skin, so any bits of silver skin or hard fat that you don't want to keep on there. Anything that's going to burn and, and sort of make a mess, we will uh, trim off. We'll put that down in our trusty bin. I have already given it a quick trim, so, so most of them bits are off. So that's looking quite nice. We'll flip it upside down first. We're going to make a quick rub for the uh, brisket. It's a traditional brisket rub would be salt and pepper. Grace don't like it too hot to I live with, so if, if you want more pepper, get more pepper in. But we're going to start with one tablespoon of coarse ground black pepper. We're going to have two tablespoons of coarse Cornish sea salt. Just to add some extra flavour into it, we've got some onion granules. And we're going to have a, a tablespoon of onion granules. It's going to be a really nice all-purpose rub that's going to work with that uh, beefy flavour. And we've got some garlic granules. We're going to have a tablespoon of garlic granules. The last thing to get that uh, barbecue now and that nice barbecue colour is one tablespoon of paprika. Right, we'll get these just quickly mixed up. It's going to make a real nice deep red salty slightly peppery and uh, oh it's really windy i apologize today the, the leaves are coming down off the trees but it's going to make a real nice rub to uh, go with our brisket i'll shift our knife at the side like all my videos i like to use a french's mustard as a schmear or a binder so we don't want a lot on there we just want enough to get it coated I've got the barbecue warming up. I will do a video for the Fornetto of starting it all the time, but as usual, coals down in the bottom. We've got some Globaltic lump charcoal in the bottom, and we've got some tumbleweed fire lighters. And we've just got that sat warming up while we uh, prep up our beef. I am going to go for a hot and fast, or, or hotter than normal. It is a small piece, I'm hoping it's not going to take too long. But I am going to smoke it around 120 degrees Celsius, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So get that meat nicely coated up. Trying to keep one hand as a clean and one hand as a dirty. The colour of this meat is absolutely lovely. One of the dangers that, that's going to be with the sort of these British cut sort of pieces of brisket is they are probably leaner than, than the nice full packers so we are going to have to make sure that we uh, keep an eye on that moisture. I haven't got a water pan, uh, correction, I've got my water pan set in but I haven't got any water set in the pan. I am just going to spritz the uh, beef as we go through the first stage of the uh, smoking and with that uh, I am going to then add it into a tinfoil tray and I'm going to add some moisture and finish off braising it for that last part of the cook. So that's our brisket joint prepped. We're just going to let it hang out on the board for a bit and then we'll get to putting it in the smoker. Right, I'm just going to bring the uh, brisket over so you can have a look and you can see a real nice crust on there not too much just a nice color we don't want it too thick because we uh, we want that to uh, smoke to penetrate that skin and talking of smoke beech wood I've got beech trees all around me and i'm still buying it off the internet eh? so hopefully we'll uh, soon get to cutting myself some of my own beech wood so it's native to my area and it's a nice all-round smoke and that's going to go really well with this piece of meat we're going to let that sort of kiss the meat for two to three hours so that piece 
which is a, a nice sort of four inch, sort of five inch square piece, will last that time. And as always, this lovely little door at the bottom of my smoker, we can get that straight in, straight on top of that fire, it's probably just slightly to the side of that. That's going to catch in the next minute and we'll uh, start to produce some wonderful smoke. Uh, we can get our meat. This is the time when you want to get the meat on. Make sure you shape it just how you want it to cook and how it's going to sit. It's looking rather nice on there. It's only a small piece, a couple of kilos. But it's going to be nice to have uh, a bit of sliced brisket tonight for tea. I'm hoping that we can get this done in six hours and keep it juicy. So stop to the end. Let's see how it turns out. See you in a couple of hours. If you are enjoying the video, there'll be a subscribe button down here. Leave us some comments. Hit that notification button because videos are just going to keep coming out. Hope you enjoy the cook. See you at the end. Welcome in the rain. Typical British weather. Good job I've got me uh, cover over me, keeping me nice and warm. Brick it. The brisket has been sat in there for about three hours now, rolling in the smoke. And the temp's been rocking around that 130 degrees Celsius, 265 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've left the pit rocking at that. It's kept quite nice and happy and it's been nice and steady for the last three hours. What I want to do now is hopefully that uh, brisket's picked up enough smoke. Is I want to get in and braise it. I'm going to take one of our steel steel our foil um, cheek pans and I'm going to line the bottom of that with some onion just one red onion chopped that's just to get some sort of aromatics going on it gives the meat something to sit on so that it keeps it out of some of the liquid but will braise as we go and I am going to add a can of coke I'll start to pour it over the top, see how much liquid gets in there. I want sort of about a centimetre of liquid in the bottom of the pan, just to sort of raise and steam that brisket. Like I say, this is a leaner cut of brisket, so we are going to have to just help it along. It might affect the bark slightly on your meat, but uh, it is going to make for a nice juicy tender cut of meat. tea towel that's what I'm thinking let's pop the lid open oh that looks absolutely fan dabby dosy it's a nice little cut of a brisket let's see if I can pop it up into that sheet pan you can see the juices are oozing out Just probe it for temp. You see where we are. So that's sitting around 67 degrees Celsius, 155 degrees Fahrenheit ish. It ain't going to take much more smoke, and if you can have a look at that, I'm going to get wet doing this. You'll see. Whoops. It's picked up a real nice mahogany colour and you can hear that the, the bark is now properly set. We'll sit that on top of them onions and then like I said we're going to reintroduce a little bit more moisture and we're going to hydrate that meat. It's been sat in that to dry heat for three hours now and I'm going to get this coke and I am going to get the full can in the uh, sheet pan. Again, like I said, this is a lean cut. We're going to try all the tricks in the book to make some nice, moist, sliced brisket that we can take out of the oven. As I mentioned, the oven, you could, if you wanted to, wrap this up now and uh, take it and put it in the oven. I like cooking outside, so may as well uh, keep my barbecue a rocking. 
decided to what goes really nice with some beef and onion is a couple of cloves a garlic again we're just going to get them aromatics working in i'm just going to break that skin drop them in there and we're going to take some tin foil yeah. i was lucky hopefully that one will fit it does i think i'm gonna just double wrap that with tin foil i'm gonna tent this up i'm gonna pop it back into the barbecue i'll open all the vents up let that temperature just climb slightly now that it, the meat's protected it's going to keep it uh, nice and moist with that uh, onion and the uh, can of coke in there and uh, get that meat nice, juicy and tender. Now I did say to you that bark will suffer a little bit but at the end of the cook we'll open it up and we'll get that bark reset. Right, we've got our meat back in the uh, barbecue. I'm gonna shut that lid, leave it for a couple of hours now. We'll come back and probe it and uh, we'll see how she's getting on. See you guys shortly. The beef's been on for about four hours now. So I'll uh, have a quick look see what she's uh, looking like it ain't gonna be the world's biggest piece of brisket it is just a, a small rolled brisket Ooh, let's just twist it around so I'm sure it's shrunk up some but I bet it's gonna be uh, tasting mighty fine right the reveal ow that's really hot steamy all them liquids have been doing the job. The brisket, actually that bag don't look too bad. It's obviously softened up, but it looks really nice. The meat's sitting uh, around 95 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's uh, fairly probe tender in, in areas. You can see it's just sinking in. Not going to be the most tenderest piece of uh, brisket, I'm sure, but who cares? I'm going to eat it. We're going to go for a little flourish of, like I said, bringing some of that bark back. And I decided to go with a little bit of sweet. I know that maybe sounds a bit strange on beef, but that honey is just going to work with the sweet. And I am going to put a little bit of heat on there with the uh, reds. Uh, unholy uh, barbecue sauce. I'll get some of that on, and that's going to bring the heat. And then we're going to give a brush. That's going to put a nice glaze, nice shine on that beef. And then all I'm going to do now is uh, pop that back in the uh, barbecue and we're going to let that glaze set up and then uh, we're going to pull her out for slicing. See you guys in a moment. Right. She's had 10 minutes just to set that glaze up. It's going to bring a nice shine back onto the. Um, I'm making a right mess. Back onto the uh, brisket. I'm going to take my trusty barbecue tongs. I'm going to just lift that. I don't want to damage that back if I can help it. I'm going to lift that up onto the board.
pop that lid back on there, just keep them juices nice and warm. And uh, there you have a nice wiggly mini brisket. We'll just uh, tent her up just to let them uh, juices sit back into it. And uh, we'll pop a quick tea towel over the top. We'll get that 10 minutes and then we're going to get to slicing. You could leave it longer, but I want to get in tonight and uh, get this eaten. I can't wait. Let's do the unveil. Just have a look at that. For a mini brisket, she looks really pretty. I feel like a bit of a samurai, you know, with my sword. It's a little bit big, my brisket slicer, for this uh, little brisket, but... I want to at least give it a slice and uh, I want to check, oh my god, check out that smoke ring. Look at that smoke ring. Let's uh, take a little end piece. Mm. That uh, sweet on the end has really made a difference. Right, let's get a few slices just done. Look at, you can see the juices. You know, look at them juices just flowing out. You know, that is beautiful. Ah, it's really hot still. Beautiful smoke test. It is just pull apart tender. And that's so delish. That really is something to uh, be quite proud of. For a cheap cut of uh, brisket, I think this cost me £12. So for £12, chuck it in there, some uh, beechwood smoke, a nice simple rub, things that you've just got in your cupboard at home. That little uh, sweet and heat at the end, which is gone on to that back you can see the beautiful smoke ring that we've managed to achieve you know look at that going for out and the juice is just still oozing out of that uh, little British rolled brisket what more do you want give it a try you don't need big fancy cuts don't get me wrong the big fancy cuts are going to be a different taste but this is definitely worth a try give it a go try it out Get your Weber barbecues, your little barbecues, smoke your sen, a little piece of rolled brisket. See you in the next video guys.